Hello everyone, this is John from Vulgar Kitten Studios, and today we're actually going to start scripting the nuts and bolts of our system. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and jump right into it and open up our data manager script. So I'm going to open that up with Visual Studio. And it takes a little while to sync. Alright, so let me just uh, open up all of my regions here. This is just a script template, template that I created. Uh, just to keep my code a little bit more organized uh, so we'll do it that way and I'm going to uh, put in a couple of using statements so actually uh, the first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to be using system and the reason is, is because uh, we'll be making use of the convert class uh, to convert doubles into floats and we'll also need to be using the boom lagoon dot json library as well so I'm going to take my class, I'm going to take my actual class, and copy that, and delete it, and we'll actually be making use of a namespace, and we'll call that data manager. Data manager, and just paste in our class, and we'll rename this to server, and get rid of the mono behavior inheritance. Alright, so now in my public fields and properties, I'm going to make a public JSON object, which is coming from the Boom Lagoon library, and I'm going to call it data, and that is going to be equal to a new JSON object. And for our private fields and properties, we're only going to need a couple, and uh, really you don't even need these, but I just like to, uh, like to abstract things just in case they need to be changed. So. I'm going to make these protected, and uh, what protected means is just like it, it's uh, it's like private, except it's got the ability to be accessed as if it were public for any classes that inherit from it. This, uh, so if we created another class and we had an inheritance chain of server, then we can actually access these protect protected properties as well, uh, just like we would just any public property through instantiating the server class that way. So we'll make a protected string and this is going to be called host and this is where we're actually going to store the base of the URL uh, for our server so we'll use HTTP colon slash slash and uh, what we called it was unity JSON and I have mine on port 8080 so I'm going to put it there and just append on a forward slash after that so we'll make another protected string and this is going to be the controller and that is going to be equal to an empty string by default because we'll just set that explicitly in our methods. So we'll make another protected string as well and call that method and just instantiate that as an empty string. And really you don't even need to initialize these. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I mean it's not necessary uh, so I'm not going to do it. And uh, we'll go ahead and start setting up our methods and for one we're not going to be using any system methods or what I call system methods would be inbuilt unity methods uh, so the start update awake all of that stuff uh, we're not going to be using any of those in this namespace so I'm just going to delete all of those and we'll go into our custom methods and first of all we'll actually need to make one to retrieve data from the server so I'll make a public I enumerator because we have to use this as a coroutine and just call it get data and we'll pass in an integer and call that ID just for the player ID. Uh, however, like I said, you, you'll probably wind up using a different kind of logic uh, just to abstract this even more. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is set our controller. And we call the controller game data, put on a forward slash. And then we'll need to use the method, method, and that is going to be equal to get dash data forward slash plus the ID that we pass in and now we'll actually need to construct the URL so we'll say we'll just make an anonymous string and call that URL and make that equal to host uh, plus controller plus method alright and now we'll actually need to create a new instance of the www class and we'll just call that www and we'll make that equal to a new www and pass in the parameter of uh, the URL that we constructed right there. Then because it's a I enumerator we need to return something so we'll yield return www. And then after that we need to actually check to see if there is any data 
and the easiest way to do that is to actually check the file size that gets returned so what we'll do is we'll create an if statement and we'll say if www.size we'll use the size property we'll see if that's less than or equal to 2 and if that's the case then we'll yield return null otherwise we are going to set the data property to json object dot parse and what we want to parse is the text that's returned from our um, from our get data method so remember uh, if we go into uh, if we go into our game controller get data dies the data uh, so that will actually be plain text just shown as if we were in the browser that's going to get passed back in through that www class and uh, we'll just set the, we'll parse that out using the JSON library okay so now we have a way to get the data we also need a way to store the data so we'll make a public I enumerator and we'll call this save data and we're going to give it an integer and call it ID and we'll give it a JSON object which uh, we'll just call we're already using data so we'll just call that dat like that let's tab that over and in here we'll need to do the same sort of thing we'll set our controller first and that is going to be equal to game data and the method this time is going to be equal to save data and we'll append on our forward slash and add on the ID as well so now we'll need to construct our URL and that is equal again to host plus controller plus method and in here we're actually going to do something a little bit different so just like if we were to create a web form in HTML we have the same sort of ability to construct that in C sharp in the background and we have a class called www form to do that so we'll create that and call that form and that is going to be equal to a new www form then we'll use the form dot add or form dot add field method and the field that we're gonna add we're gonna call that data and the reason that we're calling this data is because that's what we named it in our post save data function so we're getting the input from the post data uh, called data so we need to make sure that it's called the same when we add that field in here and so then we'll just add in the form right there or excuse me um, not the form I'm sorry about that we'll get the dat dot to string so the JSON object that we pass into this method we're going to convert that into a string and that's what will be saved into the database now we'll want to construct another www and that is going to be equal to a new www and again we'll pass in the URL but we'll also pass in the form like that and then all we'll need to do is just yield return www like that so pretty straightforward stuff so far uh, now we're actually going to get into a little bit more tricky territory so if you remember from the preview uh, we were saving colors and we were also saving transforms and stuff like that so now what we'll need to do is actually parse those out and we'll make two methods for each so the first one is going to be to actually create a color so we'll make a public JSON object and call this make color and we're going to accept a color and call that parsed color and in this method we're actually going to convert a color into a JSON object so we'll create a JSON object and call it var color and that is going to be equal to a new JSON object and this syntax is a little strange we're not using the open and closing parentheses here we're using the opening and closing uh, curly braces just like we would if we were creating an actual JSON object and of course we'll need to end that with a semicolon as well and in here we can actually construct the object so uh, we'll name the first one because uh, with JSON we actually have to name uh, the key and then give it a value so this key value pairs but those key value pairs can also like the value of a key can also be an object so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to nest those into separate objects 
So we'll need the R value, and I'm just going to put a comma here. We'll need the G value, the B value, so red, green, blue, and the alpha value, like that. And now we actually just need to assign those values. And this is where we're going to make use of the convert because uh, what we actually do when we store a number into a JSON object using this library, it stores it as a double. So that's what we actually want to do. So we'll put a comma and we'll typecast this as a float, first of all. And then we'll use the convert method to double and we'll use the parsed color dot r to actually convert that r float value into a double and we'll need to do the same thing for the rest of the values in the color so that's going to be convert dot to double and the parsed color dot g and we'll just keep going with this float convert dot to double parsed color dot b and float convert dot to double parsed color dot a all right so now we've actually successfully constructed this object but because we have a JSON object type, we actually need to return this as well. And that's just as simple as saying return color like that. All right, so now we have the ability to change a color into a JSON object. We need the ability to uh, reverse that process as well. So we'll make another public color this time. We'll return a color type and we'll call that get color. Now this is where the logic is going to get a little strange and that's just because of the and yours is probably going to vary based on how you actually want to construct your objects so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pass in an object which would be the parent of this color and then get the key which is also an object and parse that key back into a color so hopefully that makes sense so we'll accept a string and call it obj and we'll accept another string and call that key. And so we'll now create a JSON object and call that JSON object. And that is equal to data dot get object. And we'll just pass in the OBJ string. So we've retrieved the parent object. Now we actually need to do the same thing for the key within there. So we'll say JSON object color OBJ is equal to json object dot get object and the key that we passed in alright so now we need to convert those double values back into floats so what I'm going to do is actually create a few floats I'm going to call this float r is equal to and then typecast it as a float and use the convert dot to decimal this time and we'll use the color obj dot get number and then the key of that object which will be respectively r g b and a and so i'll just copy this and paste it down four times and change the letters so r g b a G B and A like that so now that we've done that we'll actually need to construct a color so I'll create a color and call that color is equal to a new color and then we'll create the color out of those R G B and A values right there and we'll just return the color after that so that is how we get a color. The process is almost exactly the same for Vector3, uh, but just for practice's sake, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that as well.
So again, we need a way to make a vector 3 into a JSON object. So we'll return the JSON object data type and call this make vector 3. And we'll have to accept a vector 3 to convert and we'll just call that vector. And in here we'll do the same sort of thing. We'll have to make the object. I'm just going to call it var v. And this is equal to JSON object. And then we'll create the object. And in here, a vector 3 actually has three values, which is x, y, and z. Uh, so we'll say x is equal to float, typecast it as a float, and then use the convert method dot to double. And the vector that we pass in dot x for the value. And I'll just put a comma on there and copy that down two times and re, uh, remove the comma off of the last one and just change the letters respectively. So x, y, and z and x, y, and z like so. And I'm still getting a little, okay, that's because we actually need to say this is a new JSON object. Okay, so my mistake there. And so now that we have that object, we can just return v like that. And so the same thing, we're now going to need to uh, retrieve a vector 3 from a JSON object. So we'll say vector 3, return a vector 3 from this method, and call it get vector 3. Not, not vector 23. Uh, Jim Carrey, you're on my mind. And we'll need an object and a key, just as we had in our uh, in our color method. And the same sort of thing, we'll make a JSON object, call it JSON object, and that is equal to data dot get object, and the object is going to be the OBJ that we pass in up here. And again, we'll need a JSON object, and this time we'll call that vector, and that is equal to JSON object dot get object. And so now we actually need to do our conversion business one more time. So what we'll do is create our floats for x, y, and z, and typecast them as floats, and then use the convert dot to decimal method, and get the vector dot get number, and the key that we want to get, which is going to be x and we'll copy that down two more times and change their letters respectively to x, y, and z for those axes and y, z like that. Now we'll construct the vector using vector3 call this result and that is equal to a new vector3 with the x, y, and z parameters. Then we'll just return the result and that should go away. There we go. So let's just go back into Unity and make sure we don't have any errors. And we don't have any errors, but again, I get these little warnings, uh, which I hate, and that's just because of my line endings. So I'm going to come into Edit, Advanced, Format Document, Save It, and make sure my line endings are OK. All right, so that is actually it for our Data Manager Wrapper class. In our next videos, we'll actually construct the ability to create a character and save his information into the database. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.